the point we want to be with y'all. Yeah. The attitude is tra is poor. I mean, and this is and this ain't this ain't Shaniqua's or whatever. This is this is this is no matter the status, the pedigree of the woman, the professional woman, the hood booger, the in between. Mm -hmm. They all are kind of indoctrinated with this same type of attitude and demeanor, and it's bad. And, and, and again, I, I, and again, if the world got the flu, black people, we got AIDS. Everything is always more severe with us. Mm. So I, I, it's I, like I, nobody is not looking to be with our women. This is what we're around. I don't choose to be born wherever I'm at. Wherever I'm at is wherever the women are around me. I have nothing to do with that. Hopefully you bump into, a, you know, a good person. But again, this is my point. Like, it's so hurtful. Like y'all will ask us something, we tell y'all, then it's but well, where are you? It's like, what are you talking about? I'm where I'm at, where I'm at. I'm in the States. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is I can't I didn't make the women that's here. So yeah, I, yeah. yeah. go ahead. Um, we ain't signing. So okay, first he he's speaking facts, right? At the end of the day, you know, we tell you if you want to accept it, accept it. But when you keep questioning our answers, it's a little bit of a pet peeve. Because if if you're going to constantly question our answers, then we just prefer not to say anything and just keep it moving. Because we tell you our experiences and then all of a sudden we have to validate that. And especially that we approach women for, for courtship. Women don't approach women. Well, the majority of women don't approach women for courtship. <laughs> so how are you going to tell up. us an experience that we don't even share? Right. So it gets a little bit annoying at times. Now, getting back to going abroad and, and the finesse game, you can mm -hmm. get finesse anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to vet. But vetting in abroad, especially Asia, where I can speak, you know, specifically in, in vetting in America is two totally different things. Right. For the most part, women there are raised to be wives before 26. They even have a thing called if you're 26 and not married, you're left over. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? It's culture and environment. Now, let's say I'm let's say uh I bring my like for example, my wife. Let's say I, I, I move back to Philly, right? My wife is 28. 28 years of, of culture, conditioning, teaching, expectations from her family. Then she comes to America. That does not change. How, who you are as a person at the core does not change. If she's going to finesse me, she could have finessed me in, in, in here in China or back in her home country because she's from the Middle East. Or, you know, we've been together for quite a long time, right? And, and most men that I know that actually are married, that go back to the States. They don't have a problem with their, with their wives, right? They actually have a problem with their children. Their children be wild. Right. Because most of my friends have been married abroad for two to three years before they even move, move back home because of the visa process. The visa process is long and it's hard, especially when you got married abroad. We, we got married abroad. We got married in Shanghai, China. So to get the visa to go back home it takes it's a process. Right. It's a two to three year process. So. You know, if she's going through that, she's in it for the long haul. It's, it's not so much of she, boom, she's she's back home. Right. And, and, and like I said, more, all of all of my friends who are married, that have been married five, six years here in China. Then when they go back home, they don't have issues with their wives. They have issues with their kids. So, you know what I mean? But of course, you can get finesse everywhere. I'm not I don't want to paint a utopian picture. But however, Women abroad, I'm speaking specifically Asia and Southeast Asia, they are groomed to be married before the age of 26, right? But of course you can find anywhere. Now for, for South America, I cannot speak to, I don't know, but I can speak to China, Philippines, and Thailand for sure. Gotcha. Okay. Let me, since we're talking about overseas, uh, let me play this clip that I saw that I thought was interesting. The go-to Yeah. And you know what? Right. Why can't they just come here to the Bronx and be a Dominican woman? Is it easier to just be here in New York? It's not because here in New York, you have the abilities to get things that you want. 
over there, you see an American guy coming to visit, and you're like, oh my God, God is on God is on Earth, because of the because of the fact that an American man, quote unquote, can give you anything, wow. can fulfill your dreams as a as a Dominican woman, right. but that's just like their way. Like they use their race and their culture to get to Dominican women because they're seen as I can and I am the word of the Americans. So that's why these. That's why, that's why the Americans is a big deal. Out yes, and that's why Dominican women, when they hear about an American guy, they go all crazy. Like, but when they're here, it doesn't apply. It doesn't because I'm already here. This is a country of opportunities. Like. Whoever, whoever doesn't get to where they want to here, either because of economics or whatever is going on in their lives, that's on them. Because honestly, you can achieve anything. So when I saw that, and again, you know, even talking about finesse, but not even, is it really a black Spanish thing? Is it not maybe an American thing where we're so open and we're able to get so much and maybe that kind of dilutes our thinking where it's like, well, now I maybe don't need a man because I can get a job, I can get this and I can get that. Does that well, play anything in it? It does. And that's what I was going to say earlier. So I have a friend that grew up with me, same city, same state and everything. He was in the Air Force for a while with me, got out. Um, and that's what I was going to say earlier. We... I know, I know the topic is about black women, and I get that. But while I was saying earlier about culture, I was referring to American culture, right? We keep saying Western culture, American culture. Because I'm like, while we keep saying black women, it's really more of an emphasis on American black women, right? Because he still dates black women. He lives in Seattle, Washington right now. He's a black guy. He dates black women. However, those black women are from Ethiopia, or they're from other, some other part of Africa, right? So... It's not so much an Latina thing, an Asian thing, or anything like that specifically. What an Ethiopian woman has in common with a Latino woman has in common with Asian women, and maybe a few European women that aren't so Western, is what um, my man was saying earlier. They're raised to be white. Mm -hmm. It's like it literally comes down to a culture thing, right? So it comes down to how you was raised. Come down to what we said earlier about attitude. It's all these incongruous things that you know that blend together that universally men find attractive, right? Now, granted, yes, you can be taking um, advantage of. Now, in South Korea, we saw, I, 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 I talked about nerds earlier, I saw some most awkward, you know, white, nerdy guys. And whether or not the Asian women liked them for them or not, you know, they was like, hey, you know, they got, they got with them after a month or two, they already getting married, right? And things of that, and things of that nature. Now, now, some countries you do have to keep your your approval by your commanders, all other stuff. You know, that's a whole other process. But you that you see things like that happening, and um, it's crazy because in Korea, there's like my other man was saying, part of what country you go to, there's different types of women. Um, you're near the basis in in South Korea. You have the uh, so-called American Koreans, where like they're the ones dressing. I'm just gonna say dressing black. They're wearing the Jordans. They're trying to wear tight jeans if they work out, whatever. They got their they're braiding their hair. They got their hoop earrings. They full blown. Then the far we get from the bases, they're more traditional Korean. But then you, you get some of them that's like, okay, well, I still want to make a black guy. So they're not full, you know, they, they embrace American culture. They embrace American culture so much. When I was there and they had a Kendrick Lamar concert, the whole crowd out there saying the N word. And Kendrick Lamar still going. But that's, that's a whole other topic. But <laughs> so this, I mean, so I, let me, I'm sorry, let me start. But basically, so what I'm saying is like, it's not so much where these women come from and how they look. It's not so much how they look. It's literally about their culture that mm -hmm. we're all we're all drawn to. Now, I'm a, I'll say this because I want to be long with it. I came to the terms a long time ago before I met my wife that. I, unfortunately, I said if I was a married black woman, I grew up with my parents, both my parents still married today. My grandparents, my mom's side, both still married to this day. Mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that, you know what, if I was to meet a black woman, she might not have her father in her life. 
it was something I didn't want. I had to I had to swallow the conclusion. Also knowing that, because I talked to my I told my wife this mark it's hard for it was hard for the take. I said, unfortunately, black I said man in general, but I guess we say black man, we look at that. We look at if you married, if your mom raised you, if your dad raised you, your dad was in your life. Because what happens is we look to see what headaches and hurts we have to overcome. Mm-hmm. Is this trauma gonna affect us? Because I know a, a woman asked one day, she said, Is it not a black man's responsibility to come and save us? And I'll, I'll tell my wife to this day, it's not my responsibility to come save a black woman just because how she grew up, because I, I didn't cause it. And it's not my son's responsibility to go save up two other black women How because you, it's, it's not. I didn't cause that pain. I was raised right. I was, but however, I, when, I met, when I dated black women, they mom came to me or came to them through them said, hey, he, he got some money. You know, you have a car issue. Uh-uh. I cut it off. I shut it down. So it's certain better processes I went through when my wife and raised by a single black mom and her kids are have different fathers. I'm like, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm sorry. These are red flags, but I'm not, but yet for me, I'm not going to hold it against you, but I'm just going to bet to see what red flags are actually there. So yeah. I, I'll, I'll say that and I'll, I'm sorry to get it back because I don't, because I can go all over the place. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to ask you guys a question as well too that I have, um, but I'm going to get to some of this super chats. Thank you so much, uh, Dennis Johnson, saying there is no community culture or country on the planet where males value independent, headstrong, combative, masculine females. Men happily work our fingers to the bone to come home to feminine, peaceful women. Which I agree. I totally agree. I think a man should come home working hard 10, 15, how many hour, hour days to peace. No one wants to come home to, to argue. So I totally agree with you. Uh, the UK economics, the same issue is happening here in England. We don't have a Latino population. So it's white women who are the main competitors for black women. So I saw in the comments, oh, and I got another one. I'm sorry. Christopher Ward. Okay. Regarding passport bros, brothers can't own a passport and travel unless their money and social standing are on point. Who can Ray Ray don't travel? Thus, passport bros equals eligible single black men. So when we're going and talking about overseas, and I think someone made this in the comment in the uh, in the chat as well. There's black women in Asia. And going overseas doesn't necessarily mean going to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, or it could be going to Africa, where black women are he- where it's heavily dense with black women. Why is it that we don't hear black men saying, yeah, I'm going to see other black women in other countries? Why is it always so, the other culture, the Latino women? Because y'all grouped all together. It's, be, it's, it's being seen as the same thing. Yeah. It, even well, though I mean, the continent know. has beautiful black women, but the whole reason I'm leaving the states is to get something different. If I'm going back to the continent, that that's remnants of what's here. And again, so, beautiful, women, attitude, beautiful women, beautiful women. Look, what's so, that? Hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me give me, give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Right. I want to say this. Okay. Uh, before I married my current my before I married my my wife. I was engaged to a black woman from Kenya because you're right. There are lots of Africans in China because they come over here to study graduate school, undergraduate school, and they work because Africa and China has like the scholarship program. So there are lots. So you'll see you'll see black women from all over the all over the continent come here. So mm-hmm. I was first engaged to a black woman from Kenya. She dipped. She left me. Second, when you go to certain places like uh, you got because I also I also go to Kenya a lot, Kenya specifically Nairobi, Uganda, and uh, Uganda are absolutely the same as the U.S. Right? They call them slave girls and all this and that. They are absolutely the same. Kenya is the most one of the most feminist countries in East Africa, and when you talk to them, it's just like talking to the girls back home. It's the absolute same. And I and before this whole situation i was i was four months in kenya and the rest of the time here in in shanghai because i do business in both places i do trade Mm -hmm. so four months every year every year in kenya 
and the rest of the time here in Shanghai, they are the same. So we, the point is, you want to get with people, you want to get with people who are marriage minded, and I can I can speak for Keyans, they're not huge out of out of wedlock、uh, birth rates, huge out of wedlock birth rates. Hmm. Can I say something? Yeah, I, go, I ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. I understand what these what this brother is saying because there was a time where the African woman was not acting that way, but it's all based to the media. Remember, I said it before, the media broadcast two months of the American program out to multiple countries in Africa.、Mm-hmm. My country, at a point, we have more women who are looking to get married. Now, I look back every now and then on different newspaper, different article, and see what's going on in my country and other country. What they got us doing is sadly true, but it's bothering me because for the simple fact that 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 generation that's following that trend are the generation that was exposed to the internet trend first. The one be one around my time was not into the internet. The younger younger generation that catching on to this thing,、right. that's what become what's happening. And that was bothersome because it's not just only South Africa. He mentioned Kenya. There's Ghana. There's Nigeria.、Um, Uganda. So many African countries that somewhat copying American culture to the point whereby it, it's troublesome. I fully understand that.、Mm-hmm. So one for the child acting why they marry the one from my country. I mentioned due to an internal family issue. With I don't want to be. They were the same in my country. Be careful who you marry to, because maybe your parent can use them as a mole to control you from behind the scene. That's、yeah. my main reason why I don't want to marry anyone from my country. My wife is from Trinidad, and I enjoy her very well. Twelve years, imagine going strong.、Mm-hmm. I consider almost an outcast because I'm married to a Trinidadian woman, even though she's black. But that doesn't count to them. So I can understand what these brothers are saying about African women are not imitating what they see in America, which is true. I cannot complain about it because they are on podcast show about they interviewing girls in the UK, also from Nigeria, that thinking the same exact way, and I'm all like flabbergasted, like really,、mm-hmm. like what do you expect going to happen? Next, you know, you be no different from the American woman; they will leave you guys behind, and you can't get married. You turn thirty, and you're not even married, like. What the heck is going on? Because back then I can vouch for it. Because back then I got people in my job asking me, "Yo, who came with that African girl? Who came with that African girl?" Right? And that's like a black girl. Like, wow, why would I marry that African girl? Yo, your African women are beautiful. This and that. Beautiful women. But now,、man. and they will tell you they travel out there. Yeah, I've been over there.、Stallions. I tell people, be careful because there's some that catching on quick, <laughs> and they're slick with it. They will sweep talk you out of your whole bank account if you're not careful.、Hmm. That would so, bug me about it. Well, I'm an African man, so how do you think I feel? Let me ask a question too, and it's you know, of course we have stereotypes, and I always think when we talk about stereotypes, it's because there's a, a it's some truth to them. Um, so when we think about stereotypes of black women, of course the negative stereotypes is being angry and loud.、Um, Just to name a couple, but then when I think about stereotypes of Latina women, it's spicy and loud and possessive. Some of the same things that are told about Black women. So I think even a lot of Black women, we talk about we're supposed to be competing with these type of women. It's like, well, shit. They remind us of us. I disagree. I disagree. I think it goes again it goes for me, for me personally, and I guess, and not, not that I can't see outside my box, I really can. But for、mm-hmm. me personally,、um, I think it comes back to culture, right? Because if you tell me there's a Hispanic chick, you know, in, in somewhere in New York, from let's say from the Bronx, I'm not gonna go talk to her versus a Hispanic <laughs> chick from Colombia because it comes back to culture. No, just not keep not not to say why、well, I was I'm, I'm in the Air Force. I love America, so it's not、mm-hmm. to say all American women. You don't know how to act. No, that's not true. Right now, living in DMV. When I came out here, and my first job out here was at the Defense Intelligence Agency, and I walked in that building, and I seen all these black people. That hit me. That felt powerful. That all these black men and women are here working for the government, and this capacity, like that, meant something to me. Right. So part of it is seeing. Part of what we say seeing is believing. 
So part of it is seeing, you know, black women in a different light. That's one. But two, part of it just, again, is, is culture, right? And I guess the two are entwined. So that's that's why for me, I, I you know, I know if you are, you have a mouth on you, you have a mouth on you. I can't, I can't deal with you. I won't even deal with you long enough to like just hit it and quit it. Unless like, no, I can't even do it. <laughs> so yeah. for, for me personally, I can't deal, I can't deal with it. it. I don't care what race you are. Because you don't have to. There's too many options out here. And, and again, <laughs> it is. I mean, and, and despite yeah. what people say, black men are in high demand. Yeah, and I've that. never, the past couple years, and like I said, I'm a little, I mean, I'm not old, but I'm just saying, you know, and I was married for 17 years. So, and like I said, I've been with my girl a couple years now, but it's like, mm -hmm. I didn't know because, first of all, it's hard out here. So again, like I'm saying, as people getting older, they kind of wising up and being like, hey, you know, or man, if you got it going on halfway decent, and I feel like I'm decent looking, I'm, you know, I'm, I do okay. I've never had a problem, you know, but if if a girl, like, I remember back <clears throat> when I was dating, the, the girl couldn't believe I had my own place mm -hmm. and a car. And I live in the DMV too area. I live in Virginia. This is how low the standard and how much of a struggle it is out here. I had to kid. It was like she was here first. She came in a park looking at man, this nice in here. And you for it, you don't live with nobody else. You ain't got no room. I'm like, what? I'm like, no, I don't. I live by myself. Like, like, like the standard, like, like, I don't know what you're accustomed to. And I mean, I got a nice pad and stuff, but she was like, and we're, and I have a I work for the government too for the Navy. I have mm -hmm. a decent job, but again. The, the demand for us, uh, especially if you're in fairly decent shit, which I, you know, and you ha a halfway decent person, women, not only black women, women notice. So, yeah, I mean, and then, too, if you're black, you kind of got some stature on you, kind of some fit, you know, there, you know, there, there's the there's the there's the and, and again, the times are, are again more moderate. So it's not as taboo for a white woman to walk up to you. Or a Latin woman to walk up to you, approach you. Um, so it you know, will. it. I mean, it happens more. You know, this didn't. This didn't. Well, I was married back in it, but I'm saying a couple of years ago, I don't feel like I saw this happening a lot with guys or guys talking about it. A lot of my homeboys are like, "Yeah, man, like you know, this happened to me too," or mm -hmm. you know, so it's just a different dynamic that you know. And the and and again, like I said, these are fairly. These are not what you consider high value men, but men making good earnings. Um, women are, are, are campaigning. So, yeah. Let me read this and I'm going to invite a couple other guys up here. I don't know why the women are scared to call in. We're talking about you, black women, but um, <laughs> Square Biz, thank you oh, so I'm much for the say awesome. Is that we're wrong. That. 